Hey weirdos and welcome back to my channel. My name is Emma Abe Books and today we are going to be talking about the Indigathon. If you do not know what the Indigathon is, it is a readathon created by Thor Once Another Letter and Etu Brody. These are both indigenous booktube creators. I will link their channels down below. And they've created this thing called the Indigathon, which is meant to celebrate, bring representation of indigenous authors, books, characters, all sorts of things to booktube. So I figured I would use this time to talk about indigenous books. I would love to participate fully in this readathon, but I do not think that is something that will be possible this year just due to classes. So many classes. Our finals are in December, early in December. I need to focus more on schoolwork, but I hope to get to some of them. I'm very excited. I would also like to add in a little disclaimer that I cannot really pronounce things. I will I will be mis mispronouncing things. It is not intentional. It is unavoidable. And I apologize. Please do not take offense because it is not meant to be offensive. A lot of these books I'm going to show you are anthropology books. Big surprise if you watched any of my other videos. Today I am going to be talking about some Native American books that are potentials for me to read in this month. In the Edigathon there is like a whole bingo square you can do. There's reading sprints. There's all of this really fun stuff. So if you want to know more or participate, please, please check out the information in the description below. Practically all of these books are, are non-fiction. I read a lot of non-fiction, so that's what you're gonna get. We're gonna get into some more fiction towards the very end of this video, so if you mm, want to know when we do that, watch the video. <laughs> first one we're gonna talk about is The Book of the Hopi. This is by Frank Waters. This is the first revelation of the Hopi's historical and religious worldview. That if you don't know anything about the Hopi worldview, it is really fascinating. They have this whole thing that they call the paseos, which is where they have to go in all the cardinal directions as far as they can until they found where they are supposed to settle, and that is where they currently live today. Yeah, they've got a lot of really really cool iconography and this really really details a lot of their religious views and their ceremonies. This will be really interesting to look at and this does not have an audiobook. Books I'm going to show you are all from my personal collection that I have spent years curating and cultivating and trying to grow. Unfortunately I did not have too good of experience at my library in my hometown trying to find books on indigenous people, Native Americans, or anything like that. It was quite depressing. The only books I could really find were books in the junior section. None of them were at all like ethnographies or anything that I really wanted to read or that would help me have a better understanding. It largely turned me off and made me angry at my local library. That kind of helped spur my desire and push to build my own collection. I've not looked at all at the Cincinnati Public Library so I don't know about their collection. The next book is The Killing of Crazy Horse by Thomas Powers and as you can probably guess this talks about Crazy Horse's death. What went in to the lead up to his death and everything with the Sioux War and all of that really fun stuff. This one does have an audiobook. The next book kind of going off the lines of that last one is Sitting Bull. The Life and Times of an American Patriot by Robert M. Utley and Sitting Bull's just story is so tragic and fascinating and really is what sparks the Wounded Knee Massacre, which is just one of the arguably most tragic events in American history. I think the title is very aptly named. This does not have an audiobook. I don't want this video to be forever long, so that's why I'm kind of going through these videos sort of fast. So the next book is Black Elk Speaks, being the life story of a holy man in the Ongala Sioux as told through John G. Nearhart's Or Flaming Rainbow. And this is also by Flaming Rainbow or John G. Gerhart. And this goes through his life and his experience. This does have an audiobook, which I thought was really cool. And this does touch on his time living on the reservation. If you wanted to, you could make these books fit the prompts. But next book is The House of Rain, Tracking a Vanished Civilization Across the American Southwest by Craig Childs. And this chronicles uncovering the Anasazi people, talks about the Anasazi people, and this does have an audiobook. Next we have The Limits of Multiculturalism, Interrogating the Origins of American Anthropology by
by Scott Michelson and the reason that this is in this list is because this talks a lot about the origins of anthropology and how that intersects with Native Americans and lots of the Native Americans who were being exploited. It even talks about the Native Americans who were working as anthropologists but never really got like recognition that they should have gotten. It's a really really interesting discussion. It doesn't have an audiobook. It's written by anthropologists for anthropologists. The next book that I want to talk about is Cahokia, Ancient America's Great City on the Mississippi by Timothy R. Pocket. This is a brief like overview of Cahokia and the history of Cahokia and the culture in Cahokia. This has an audiobook. The next book I want to talk about is the Navajo Code Talkers by Doris A. Paul and this is a brief, brief overview. This does not have an audiobook. I think it's super cool and I think it's awesome. The Navajo were able to help out America. All they really had to do was speak their own native language. Next book I want to talk about is When Moctezuma Met Cortez, The True Story of the Meeting That Changed History by Matthew Restall. I think that whole history with Hernan Cortez and, and Moctezuma and the Aztecs and the fall of the Aztecs to be extremely fascinating. This does have an audiobook so that's awesome. Next is They Came Before Us, The African Presence in Ancient America by Even Van Sturma. I am very, very intrigued by this book because basically the author argues that Native Americans and Africans had been in contact with each other and it looks at ancient shipbuilding and all of this stuff. So this one, I don't really understand it, but basically it all takes place before Columbus, which is very interesting. I'm very very curious to see what this book really has to say. This does not have an audiobook. Sadly, Ivan Van Stratima is an anthropologist. Next book is Lost Bird of Wounded Knee, Spirit of the Lakota by Rene Sanson Flood. This tells the story of one of the, I believe, two survivors of the tragedy that was the Wounded Knee Massacre, that being Lost Bird. Very tragic story. Lost Bird and the other survivors' stories are just very sad. <sighs> And this does not have an audiobook, but I'd be really interested to see the story. I did learn briefly in my in one of my classes, but I don't exactly remember all of the details, so it'd be nice to have an actual book that details everything. The next book is The Iroquois by Barbara Graymont, and this is a series that Chelsea House Publishing did on a bunch of different tribes. As you can see, if I like this one, then I should hunt out the other ones because I'm thinking that these would be great to help introduce smaller children to, to Native Americans and also get a very brief overview of the individual cultures of Native Americans. This does not have an audiobook. really like the wampa belt that they're featuring on the cover. Next is the Native American Almanac, more than 50,000 years of the cultures and histories of indigenous people by Yvonne Joaquin Dennis, Ardline Hirschenfelder, and Shannon Rogenberger Flynn. This is a great resource if you want to look up certain specific things about Native American history and culture. It's brief descriptions about the individual things, but once you have the brief descriptions, you can piggy up back off and learn so much more. I don't think I'll ever actually read this cover to cover, but it'll be a nice like reference guide. Next book is The Way to Rainy Mountain by N. Scott Normanday, illustrated by Al Normanday, and this is a collection of oral histories of the Kiowa from the Great Plains. These histories were passed down through N. Scott Nomadi's family. He decided to write them down and this is a really interesting thing where it has three perspectives. It has the actual oral history, then it has a historical context, and then it also has N. Scott Nomadi's personal connection to it, which I think is really cool and it'll be a really interesting read. It is a very short. I should breeze through this. I've been really meaning to get to this for a very long time. I hope that I can get to it this month. This also does not have an audiobook. The next book I want to talk about is Maya, The Riddle and Rediscovery of a Lost Civilization by Charles Genkla Camp. This is the story of the Maya and how they were refound and how the whole, the decoding of 
the Mayan writing system is a very, very interesting story in and of itself, which we do not have time to talk about today. But I want to go to bed at some point. This is a nice, cool one. This does not have an audiobook. The next book is Myths and Legends, Classical Greek, Celtic, Norse, Chinese, African, Native American, and more. This is edited by William G. Doty. The only reason this is in this pile is because it does have Native American myth. There's about 50 pages of Native American myths, so if you want a very quick overview. Next we have the Aztec, Inca, and Maya Empires, Illustrated History of Aztec Peoples of Mesoamerica and South America. This does not have an audiobook about the history of each of these amazing empires. The next stuff I'm going to show you is all from Abriendo Puertas, Ampliando Perspectivas por Boyen y Boyen. This is my AP Spanish Lit textbook. All of these tabs are writings that are specifically involving Native American slash themes of Native Americans. They're all writings in Spanish, but I'm sure you can find translations of them somewhere. First off, let's go to Voces Indígenas, and there are three main readings. The first one you have is de las señales y pronósticos que apreciaron antes de los españoles vi viniesen a esta tierra ni hubiese noticia de ellos por Fray Bernanio de Shaogun. That is basically all of the different prophecies that appeared or supposedly appeared before Hernán Cortés came and was the warning signs of the downfall of the Aztecs. Next reading in Voces Indígenas would be Historia de Texicala, Rodijos que se vieron en México antes de a la llegada los españoles por Diego Muñoz Camargo. This is a very brief history, history of Mexico. The last reading from Voces Indígenas is Cantares Mexicanos se ha perdido el pueblo en México. As you can see from this, they couldn't publish it because copyright reasons. It is a collection of songs from the Nahuatl people. So the next reading is Segunda Carta de Relación por Hernán Cortés. That is the letters between, these are the cards that between Hernán Cortés and the King of Spain and it based, oh sorry, these are my notes <laughs> from class all those years ago. And this is the letters that Hernán Cortés wrote to the King of Spain really describe the Aztec culture that he experienced. And as you can imagine, they are extremely ethnocentric, but they are a really fascinating view and is one of the only slash first real documented accounts we have of the Aztec people from an outsider's point of view. The next couple ones I'm going to show you don't necessarily talk specifically about Native Americans, but they draw a lot about on the themes of the legacy of colonization within South and Central America. So the next one is Nuestra America por José Martí. It is an essay that was written as a cry for unification between North America and South America to be able to join together and just create more cohesion. The next reading is A Roosevelt por Ruben Dario. This is a poem written to Theodore Roosevelt, kind of talking about American like expansion and intervention in foreign affairs, but it also intersects. This next one is Chuck Mool por Carlos Fuentes. Chuck Mool is a Mayan god. Basically, in this short story, this dude, this ordinary dude, gets a statue of Chuck Mool, and weird shit starts happening. Good short story is weird. It's weird, but it's off. The last one from here. La Noche Boca Arriba por Julio Cortazar. This story is weird. <laughs> you follow this man in hospital and you follow the same man running through the woods but in prehistoric time. Which reality is which? Those are all my recommendations. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm very excited. The anthropology department at my university is planning on doing a series of movies that we're going to watch. I'm not really sure which movies. My friend is organizing it and I told her, let me know. I'll be there if I can, if I don't have like classes or anything else. I am super excited to try and read some of these books. I'm obviously not going to read all of them. Let me know if you have any questions about any of the books that I have showed you. Um, hit me up on the social media if you want to talk to me directly. Um, yeah, like, comment, share this book. It's very pretty. Um, yeah. 
have a nice day and I'll see you next week. Please leave comments in the description on Native American literature that you guys enjoy. It can be fiction or nonfiction. I don't really care. Like, I want to, you know what I want? I say I want to get a book on the Olmec.